All right, here we are looking at a worm bin. Looks like it might be 20 years old and it's still in excellent shape, but it was neglected. So we're doing a restart on this worm bin. As you can see, it's heavy plywood. You wouldn't use pressure treated wood of any kind. And here's the inside of the worm bin. So this worm bin actually comes with uh, specs on how it can be built. You need at least a lid, you need a box, and you need some form of drainage. So inside, when we um, took all the junk out of here, we realized there was no drainage. So there are new holes being drilled there in the bottom. And I am going to show you how you would drill just a couple holes a little higher up on the side. And this is for you to have ventilation. So smoking. All right, so it will take me some time, but I would probably put four holes, four holes, four holes, four holes, and the bottom. So these holes that have been drilled are on the large size. They're uh, about a quarter of an inch, so worms can't escape through them. Not a big problem if worms get out, you pick them up and you put them back in. If you have uh, new worms and you put them in, you can set up a shop light so that they know that they need to stay inside if they're trying to get out. Okay, so this is a two-bin, side-by-side worm bin. So there's a middle board that goes in this slot, and that allows you to feed your worms on one side until you have a substantial amount of castings produced, then start feeding on the other side and open up the corral for the worms to migrate. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, worms need air and they need moisture. Dry worms are dead worms. They have to breathe through their skin. So anything we put in here needs to be moist. Isn't this interesting cardboard? So this is the bedding part. Worms actually eat their beds. So this is their habitat. It's just newspaper that has been moistened. Don't use shiny magazines. Uh, you can use cardboard. If you use things like uh, boxes that you get at the deli, the cardboard will get eaten and there's this little wispy wax paper that will just leave it. And you just take that out. So you're really not going to harm the worms by having that. So this is wet material. And because this is a starting of a new worm bin, we're just going to start small, one side. I, ordinarily, I would fill this with damp newspaper up to a couple inches from the top. And that is your bedding. The next thing is worms need something else to eat. They can't live on carbon alone. So the worms we're using are red wigglers. And they are composting worms. They do not live in the soil. They will die if you put them directly into your garden soil. So what they're doing is this job. This is it. They do like your compost heap, though. So if you don't have a worm bin, you can always just throw them in your compost heap. So this is compost worm-ready stuff. So they like apples, but think to the size of a worm. It has to be pretty small. So, and they love banana peels and coffee grounds. Tea bag.
worms. They're a different kind of worm. And your worm anatomy that you sort of need to know, this little fatter spot on the worm is, I call it the saddle. If you were small enough, you could ride on that. But that is the clitellum. That is where worms um, get together and reproduce because they're hermaphrodites. Any two worms can reproduce. And when they do, they lay a cocoon and it has about 20 eggs in it. And they can do that quite often. Worms, no eyes, no ears. They do have a very sturdy mouth. They have five hearts because they're constantly pumping, pumping from one end to the other, and a gizzard. So worms go in, and they, you want to protect them from extreme cold, extreme heat, and drying out. So dry worms are dead worms. This should feel like uh, a wrung out sponge. Uh, worms are producing castings. So this is worm poop, and the worms uh, will reach a point where if they're in 100% castings, that's toxic to them. So you start harvesting before it reaches that point, and um, you will have some leftover detritus so that they can, uh, so that they are not in a toxic. Especially this, I would have. You could do it with uh, a layer, thick layer of newspaper, but basically it's a barrier, and it helps keep moisture in. It helps keep flies out. So there are a lot of critters that are going to occur in here, and you shouldn't be too worried about what they are. The main thing you should worry about is odor. If you're smelling, that means that you have a wetness problem and that you need to dry things out. And you would do that by adding more bedding and let the worms solve it. No, still moist, but not soaking wet. So we have food, we have worms, we have bedding, and they're going to work. And this particular worm bin has a separator that allows us to keep this side of the bin separate from this side. When this is ready to be harvested, most of the food has been eaten. You take this out and having prepared the other side exactly like this, the worms will migrate. That might take them a week. And then you can harvest what's in here. And you do that in this particular kind of bin. You're going to have to scoop this out, and you're going to sift it, and you lay it out, and remove any worms and put them back in the other side of the bin. And that's pretty much it for this kind of bin. The reason to have a wooden bin is it is a great insulator, protects worms from cold, from heat. It also will make things pretty damp, and usually it doesn't get too wet, which can happen in a plastic bin, like a, a bucket bin or whatever. The reason not to have it is that now, if you bought this much lumber, it would cost a lot of money, and but obviously it would stand up to time, and uh, it's not necessarily the right size for your average family garden, unless you really are into this. So you can make a very reasonable worm bin out of a tough bin, that you can get at a big box store. You do the same thing. You drill your holes. You fill it with bedding. You put in your food. You always bury your food. You put in your worms. And voila.